the book is here. The book is here, my friend. I'm so excited to announce that my new book, my first book, Be Seen, Find Your Voice, Build Your Brand, Live Your Dream, is officially available for pre-order. Oh my gosh, such an exciting moment. And I'm so grateful that you are hearing this because it means that you can go pre-order and get some of my really dope bonuses. Now, I love to incentivize people to take action fast because momentum begets momentum. So I want you to go and pre-order. And when you do, head on over to jengottlieb.com slash be seen and put in your order information so you can get the bonuses for pre-ordering. The bonuses are amazing. First, immediately you're going to get the recording of me reading the introduction and the first chapter to the book. So you can listen to the intro and the first chapter before anybody else. And it's me reading it. So you're going to get a lot of different little behind the scenes nuggets. You'll also get a special invite to my very first Manifestation Masterclass virtual event. Now, this is a two-hour virtual event that I'm going to do where I it's the first time I've ever taught manifestation in that kind of uh, atmosphere where it's a place where you can ask me questions and we're together on Zoom. It's going to be epic. So everybody that pre-orders is going to get an opportunity to join me for that manifestation masterclass. So I can't wait to see you there. I'm so excited for you to get the book in your hands and for you to get those amazing bonuses. So go on over to jengottlieb.com slash be seen and order your book wherever you want to order it from, but put that order number into the website so you can get the bonuses. Go do it. I dare you. Can't wait to hear what you think. Time doesn't stop. Discomfort is temporary, but growth that comes on the other side of of getting through that discomfort, that's permanent. That's forever stuff. That's what confidence is made out of. What if today was the day that you dared yourself to do what you've always wanted? Welcome to the I Dare You podcast. I'm your host, Jen Gottlieb. And together, we're going to step outside of our comfort zones and into our best lives one dare at a time. So come on, I dare you to dive right on in. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the I Dare You podcast. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Many of you know, some of you don't, that I do get ready with me every single morning, Monday through Friday. And what that is, is an Instagram live where I answer all of your questions live on Instagram while I put my makeup on. I've gotten lots of DMs from you guys that are on the Pacific coast saying, oh my gosh, it's too early for me. I miss it every time. I'm so bummed. Where are the recordings? And we don't save the recordings. So per request, what we're going to do is take some of the best questions and answers from Get Ready With Me's and put them here on the podcast. So you can hear me answer questions about manifestation, marketing, mindset. We're going to pick all the most powerful questions and answers and put them here on the I Dare You podcast for you. So if you missed to get ready with me, there's a really, really good chance that you're going to hear something that you needed listening to these episodes. So without further ado, here is a sneak peek of a get ready with me. Keep in mind, by the way, if you hear some clanging in the background, it's probably because I'm putting my makeup on and sitting at my vanity while answering these questions. So just envision that and put yourself there and make believe that you are with us doing Get Ready With Me Q&A. There is something that I want to talk about before we get into the Q&A. And it's it's literally the greatest mindset tool that I've that I've given myself this year that I've discovered that I started doing that has really, 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 really helped me in the most powerful way. And it's something that I like to call Matt Moments. And I gave it a name because it needed a name. It was this thing that I started doing and it was so powerful that I said to myself, you know what, you need to like give this a name and make it a strategy and a tool that other people can use because this is like really cool and it really works. And the way that I come up with a lot of the things or in my book or the stuff that I teach or my content is really by trial and error and me being the guinea pig and trying things and figuring it out as I go. I was having a conversation with my ther- one of my therapists, this isn't the therapist I have now, an-, an old therapist gave me this great gift. She's no longer my therapist, but she did really helped me in a big way with this. And we were talking about body image and we were having a conversation about my past. And I I talk about it a lot in my book. I had an eating disorder for the majority of my young adult life. And I used to work out to punish myself. And I used to work out so unbelievably hard 
that I was, I, I felt like I needed to punish my body and that I was never working out hard enough. And I was just like beating the crap out of myself to burn off whatever food that I ate, which was like a punishment for eating that food. And it was a terrible mindset. And we were talking about that. And she gave me this exercise to do that I started playing with. And it started to really, really help me appreciate my body for all of the amazing gifts that it gives me other than my, my physical form. Meaning if we are so lucky and blessed that our bodies move in a way that feels good, and we can go and we can walk and run and lift weights or move or pick up our kids or run after our dogs or do the thing that we love to do most by using our body, that's something to be unbelievably grateful for. So she said, she's like, how about after your workout, you thank your body for doing its job? And so I was like, that's a cool idea. So I expanded on it. And after my workout one time, this is how this was invented. I've never actually told the story how this, how I invented this. I laid down on the, on the mat after my workout. I decided I was going to thank all of my body parts. I was like, this is, this is not a bad idea. I'm going to thank my body for moving this morning because I'm very blessed that I got to actually exercise. Because if I couldn't do that, I would feel like, oh my gosh, I, I really, you know, I wish I could move my body. So this is something to be unbelievably grateful for. So I started thanking my body. I thanked my feet. Like, thank you, feet. Thank you, calves. Thank you, quads. Thank you, glutes. Thank you, lungs. Thank you, heart. Thank you, hands. Thank you, arms. And I started to just show appreciation for my body and it started to feel really good. And I started doing that every time I worked out. And it, it was just like that nice little tiny reminder to be grateful for the things that we can control, that we do have, that, that we are blessed with instead of trying to think about what we don't have and what could be better. And a lot of the times when I was ex exercising in my past, when I had a really bad mindset around it, I was just trying to beat my body up and not be nice to it and punish it. So instead of punishing it, I decided I was going to be kind to it and thank it for moving. And that really, really, really changed a lot for me when it came to being excited about going to the gym and working out because I was like, wow, my brain started to change its pattern. And the tape that was playing in my mind went from being, I got to go work off all the food I ate, or I have to go punish my body. And it flipped into, wow, I'm so excited that I get to move my body today. I'm so excited. Like, thank you. And I, and I thought about my body as something that I was so blessed to have that moved. And, and I started treating it a lot more kindly and with a lot more care. So this grew into something much different. So then I would, I would have this moment on the mat every time I worked out, this is for years, laying on the mat, thanking my body parts. But something different happened this year when I was doing that. After I thanked my body, I would look up at the universe and God, whatever you believe in, for me, it's God. And I would just say, thank you, God, for this moment. And I would look up at the ceiling. And every time I looked up at the ceiling, I would have this moment where I was like, oh my gosh, I always end up back here on this mat. No matter what I'm worried about, no matter how hard the workout was, no matter how hard my day was, no matter how difficult or how nervous I was about that speaking engagement or that business decision, no matter how hard my moment was, I always end up back on the mat. No matter what, time doesn't stop. No matter what, I end up back here. And then I think about, wow, when I'm working out, when it's really hard and it's really uncomfortable, what if I just thought about the moment when I was going to be on the mat? Because no matter what that time, the time's not going to stop. The discomfort is not going to be forever. It's only going to be temporary. And when I get on the mat and I look up at the ceiling and I say, wow, I'm here back on the mat, how do I want to feel? Do I want to feel proud of myself because I really pushed myself and I went to the limits and I really used my body and I really worked hard and I really went outside my comfort zone and I was willing to experience that discomfort for that short amount of time for the growth that I was going to get at the end on the mat? Or do I want to say, wow, I could have been better. That could have been better. I phoned it in. Well, y'all know that I am always preaching that confidence comes from consistently sticking with the commitments you make with yourself. And so if I say I'm going to do something and I don't show up and I don't stick to that commitment and show up as my, the best version of myself for that moment, when I get to the other side, I'm actually telling my subconscious, like, you don't show up for yourself. You say you're going to do something and then you don't completely follow through. So the next time I go to do something hard, I'm not going to necessarily believe in myself. But every time I get to that mat moment, when I lay on the mat, I look up at the ceiling and I ask myself, how did I do? I'm here. No matter what, I'm always going to end up here. It's the time in between. How am I going to show up? How do I want to feel at the end? Because it's going to end. And when I can stick to that commitment, if I committed to do a good job at whatever that is, whether it's a workout or it's your day at work or it's a difficult conversation with a family member, whatever it is, how do you want to feel when you end up at your, in your bed that night, on the mat the next day? Time doesn't stop. Discomfort is temporary, but growth that comes on the other side of, of getting through that discomfort, that's permanent. That's forever stuff. That's what confidence is made out of. So I love having that mat moment and I wanted to share it with you because it's a really, really great tool that we can all use to remember the one thing that's certain and that's that this too shall pass. All uncomfortable situations eventually end. We always end up in our bed. We always end up on the mat at the end of the workout. We always end up 
If you're in a show, if you're speaking on a stage, you end up at the end where you take your bow. How do you want to feel at the end? If we were more intentional about that feeling that we want to have, and we were more, uh, we reminded ourselves more that time never stops and that discomfort of that moment will only be for a second, then we will show up so much better in the moment when we consistently practice that. This question is about manifestation. I'm trying to embody the person I want to become, but sometimes it's difficult for me to feel the emotions of that person. How do you do in this case? Yeah, it's not easy all the time. And sometimes sometimes it's hard for me too to do that. I have three different manifestation techniques that I love that help me to embody the the feelings of of the person that has the things that I want. Um, and and they're, they're not easy and they actually take practice to get really good at. And it's okay if you try them and you don't really tap into the feelings. All you need to do is like believe in it like 51%. And all you need to do is like feel it a little bit more than you don't in order to create that momentum to then try again next time. And maybe you'll get a little bit further along next time. So I want you to be kind to yourself and your progress. If you can't like tap right into those feelings right away, it's okay. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, feeling feelings as if you have something that you don't really have. It takes practice, just like anything. We get good at what we practice, though, and that's the good news, that the more that you take action and the more that you try and the more that you go for it, even if you don't necessarily believe 100%, the better you'll get at it. So my three favorite manifestation techniques are these. Number one is a future gratitude list. Now, this is one of the easiest things that you can start to do that can bring you to those feelings of gratitude for having something that you don't necessarily have yet uh, and start to feel like it's already yours. And so I've been doing this for a really, really, really long time. Uh, I would write down, and I did it in a way where I didn't really realize what I was doing, I think. I had like a book that I read. I don't remember what it was that told me that you should do a journal prompt every day saying, today was amazing because. So I started writing out every morning, today was amazing because, even though the day didn't happen yet. And I would write down things that I would want to happen in my day as if they happened. So today was amazing because it felt easy and fun and flowy. I used to write down, today was amazing because I met the love of my life today. Today was amazing because an amazing, incredible opportunity came into my life and it was a pleasant surprise. So I started doing that and then that turned into my future gratitude list. So I started actually writing down things that I was grateful for as if they already happened. So I would say, I'm so grateful that today was amazing because I met the love of my life today. I am so grateful. I am so grateful that I showed up as my best self today. I'm so grateful that my Instagram live was incredible. So many people got so much value and I helped someone in a really big way. I'm so grateful that I crushed it at my keynote talk. It was incredible. I felt so in flow. Um, I knew exactly the words to say. It felt amazing. And I was so proud of myself at the end. If you consistently just start feeling gratitude for those things and envision that they're happening for you, that they're there, just like a kid would play pretend but you just keep start saying it and feeling it like, I'm so grateful for this. I'm so grateful. And write it down and read it and tap into those feelings. With practice, you will get really good at starting to feel it. And then my second thing that I love to do to tap into the emotions of having the thing that I want or being the person that I want to be as if I've already done it is taking wonder walks. If you've been with me for a while, you hopefully have taken a wonder walk because I talk about them too much because they are so powerful. I did one today. I will use wonder walks for a lot of different reasons. In my book, Be Seen, I don't know where it just went. Um, I had it in my hand and it went away. Um, I talk about doing wonder walks to tap into um, your the, real, the realest version of you. But I really like to do wonder walks also to tap into the version of the person that I want to be. And so what I'll do is I'll start with future gratitude. I'll go for a walk. I'll put in my wonder walk playlist, which I have for, available for you. If you pre-order the book and you send me your confirmation image, the screenshot of your confirmation, I'll send you my wonder walk playlist the best playlist ever. I'll listen to my playlist and I'll walk as if I'm the person that I want to be. So I'll envision in my mind that I'm walking home from, let's say this is when I was envisioning uh, manifesting the love of my life, manifesting my husband. I would envision that I was walking next to my husband and holding his hand and we were walking back from a date night and I would listen to the playlist and I would just visualize that as I walked, I'm the person that has the love. I'm the person that's so in love. I'm the person that's walking home to my beautiful home that I live in with the love of my life. I'm what I have the best job. Like I am embodying all of the things that I wrote down on my future gratitude list. And I'm walking around the planet so grateful and excited about being that person and stepping into being that person. There's something magical that happens with movement when you combine it with music and just 
stepping one step at a time in the body of the person that has the thing that you desire. It's so unbelievably powerful. And so I would invite you to try that. So you got your future gratitude list. You've got your wonder walk, which if you want the wonder walk playlist, pre-order the book and send me your confirmation and I'll send it your way. I'll just send it to you in the DMs. You'll get it immediately. So you can do it today. And then my other favorite manifestation technique is the celebration visualization. I have created or am creating a creation kit, which has all of these techniques inside of it. So you're going to be able to have a actual celebration visualization meditation guided by me because this is my favorite visualization exercise that I do. And it's basically visualizing that all of your friends and family are celebrating you. Like closing your eyes and imagining that you have accomplished something incredible. You don't necessarily need to know what the thing is that you accomplished. You just accomplished something phenomenal and you are in flow in the pocket and your friends and family are all celebrating you. They are all high-fiving you and hugging you and loving on you and celebrating you. And you are envisioning that celebration and how that feels and the gratitude for feeling into that, that moment of celebration. Or you could even envision signing a big check or depositing a big check into your bank account. You don't even necessarily need to know what the check is for. You're just celebrating that you're signing it. You're feeling the gratitude for how much money is going into your bank account, the abundance, the joy, the excitement, all of that. And just visualizing it and playing the movie in your mind. And then you can combine all three. The visualization, uh, the celebration visualization, the wonder walk, and the future gratitude list. You could go for a walk, say your future gratitude list, and then envision that you're walking to your celebration that your friends and family are throwing for you, the party for all the things that you've accomplished. I've been a perfectionist for many, many years. It's good to be one, but now being a perfectionist hinders me from trying and putting out something in public. I keep procrastinating. How to overcome the feeling of being judged. Well, my love, you are not alone, my dear. I'm going to Atlanta tomorrow to do a keynote speech for um, an event that's hosted by Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher. He's actually one of the top motivational speakers in the world. And one of the things that I'm going to be talking about is perfectionism. And I actually also just posted a quote on my Instagram wall about perfectionism. We, we've really been raised in this culture to think that making sure that everything's perfect is like, is a good thing to do and is the thing that we should be doing. And we should be making everything perfect. And often we scroll social media and we see all of these quote unquote perfect images. And we think that that's what life should be like. And we need to wait to produce anything until it's absolutely perfect. Well, <laughs> perfectionism is Simply, number one, insecurity, caring too much about what other people think. And number two, perfectionism is also just a form of fear. Because fear's whole job is to keep us the same. That's fear's job. Fear does not want us to take any kind of action that makes us feel uncertain, right? So fear is going to come in and it's going to lie to us in all kinds of different ways. And saying that it needs to be perfect before you can release it into the world is one of the ways that fear tells us lies. It's one of the symptoms of fear. In my book, there's an entire chapter on fear, and I talk about the six symptoms of fear, and perfectionism is one of them. But it's totally unbelievably normal if you're experiencing perfectionism, especially as somebody that has been a higher achiever for your whole life, and you've really been, like, when you, when you do good, people make you feel worthy and excited and, and loved. And, and, and as children, many of us, including me, like, when I would accomplish and achieve and do a good job, that's when I would get praised. And so we start to develop this feeling of, oh, my gosh, it needs to be perfect. And then, but what, here's what happens. It's simply fear telling us it needs to be perfect. So then we stop taking action if it's not perfect. And nothing's going to be perfect. And the key to growth is doing things imperfectly and figuring out what works and what doesn't. So if you're too scared to put something out there or start because you're scared that it's not going to be perfect, you're never going to try and you're never going to start. And then fear has won. Check. It's won. It's done its job. It's keep, kept you the same. It's kept you stuck. And you're never going to produce anything until it's perfect, which means you're never going to produce anything. You're never going to try. So how do we move past perfectionism? I like to say a mantra and my mantra is better done than perfect. Better done than perfect. And every time that I start to wrap my head around uh, perfectionism or get trapped in wrapping my head around perfectionism and thinking, oh, it's not just right. It's not perfect. Uh, I need to wait until I post that. I need to wait until I share that. I need to wait until I produce that. You want to make sure that it's good. You don't ever want to just be like sloppy, messy completely and not paying attention. You want to do good work. But you need to understand that it needs to go out into the world in order to start to perfect itself. 
We don't know what works and what doesn't until we put it out there, perfect or not. So just get it done, get it produced, get it out there. And once it's out there and once you've done it and once you've announced it to the world or put it out there or tried it, then you're going to learn things about that thing or how to do that thing again to make it better next time. We have to start to be ready. We have to produce to be closer to perfect. But you never, ever want to be perfect because perfect is so unbelievably boring. If, if, if a movie was perfect and there was no conflict and there was no ups and downs and lefts and rights and all kinds of crazy turns and messiness, would it be interesting? No, it's boring. It's unbelievably boring to be perfect. And when you're trying to build a brand online, I'm telling you right now that no one wants to connect to per- with perfect people or listen to perfect people because perfect people don't exist. Perfectionism is going to hold you back in every way, shape, and form if you are trying to grow, if you let it keep you stuck. So my ask for you, my love, is to just completely repeat this mantra again and again. Better done than perfect. Get it as close as you can possibly get to what, what would make you proud at the end of the day if you released it. But understand and know that if you wait till it's perfect, it's never going to get out there and you're never going to learn and you're never going to grow and you're always going to stay the same and you're always going to be wondering what if. My fear of wondering what if and having regret is way greater than producing something that's not perfect and people may be possibly judging me as a result of that thing not being perfect. And here's another mic drop moment for you. People aren't spending as much time judging you as you think. People are worried about themselves. They're thinking about themselves. They're not as worried as we think they are about us. I promise you. I promise you, promise you, promise you. So the day that you can care less about what other people think is the day that your life will change. And I know that that is such a, so much easier said than done because we care what people think. It it really is like a natural, a natural thing that we do as humans. But if you can care less and you can care more about yourself and the work that you want to do in the world than what you care about the judgment of others, you will produce more. You will grow more. You will make a bigger impact. You will have more success. You will have more fulfillment. And I can say that only from experience, only from experience, experience in watching other people do it that way and starting to realize that and myself and with myself, like I cared so much about what other people thought for so long. And if I could go back and tell my younger self anything, it would be that none of those people's opinions matter. They don't. And if you let that hold you back, fear of what other people will think, you will not accomplish your dreams. You got to keep your blinders on. You got to stay focused. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the I Dare You podcast. I'm so grateful you chose to spend this time with me, but I'm even more grateful for your future self that you are building one dare at a time. So my first dare for you is to subscribe to the show and then share it with a friend who you think needs to step a little bit more outside their comfort zone and into their best lives. They'll thank you for it. I'll see you next time on the I Dare You podcast.